Good morning. Welcome to Fire Vinyasa by Buffy. I've received a request to show some yoga postures or a yoga routine that can help relieve pain in the upper back, shoulders, and neck. So before I go into the postures, I'd like to talk about the causes, possible causes, of upper back, shoulder, neck pain. Now, of course, the first possible cause that we must talk about is injury. So if you've had an injury in the past in the upper back area or the neck, please consult a physician before you practice. I am not a doctor, I am a yoga practitioner. So any injuries you may have may change what's accessible to you. So going forward from injuries, we're going to assume for this routine, these postures, that there are no injuries, which means that the reasons for pain are most common due with tightness. Tightness in the upper back and the neck and the shoulders usually caused from stress or other reasons. And then muscle tightness. And muscle tightness can happen also from stress, holding all that tension or stress in our upper back or our neck. It can also come from new exercises, new things that you're doing with your body. So maybe take some time to think about what you've been doing. Maybe there's a sore muscle, tight muscle somewhere. Either way, these postures will help release that muscle and to help it recover from that exercise. So we've gone over injury or other physical reasons and now we're gonna go through an energetic possibility. We have an energetic body and up here is what we call the throat chakra. So in the energy body, the throat chakra, that's the energy that commands self-expression, voice, and being able to tell our truths. So any pain or discomfort, a lot of ailments that are associated with the energy body, that's in the neck, shoulders, upper back, we want to think about things that have to do with our self-expression and our voice. Sometimes a disruption in the throat chakra can be caused from not being able to tell our truth, feeling heavily censored, feeling like we are unable to fully express ourselves, and of course that ranges in degrees. So if it goes on for a while and the censorship or the inability to speak our truth or to express ourselves gets prolonged, that can cause a disruption. Disruptions can lead to blocks. So we wanna be very careful about our energetic body. The good news is that these postures and routines that I'm going to go through are good for all three of the latter reasons. So it's designed to release tension, to relax muscles, and to help open that throat chakra. So if it's a little bit of all or one, we're going to get it. All right, and before we start the yoga routines, since this is designed to release muscle to release tension to relax muscles and to open a chakra we're not focused on movement really or cardio we're really focused on the posture itself so we're going to focus on posture we're going to focus on isometric holds and we're going to focus on breath our breath is our life our breath is our movement so with that we're going to start in easy pose easy pose is sitting crisscross applesauce if you went to kindergarten. Okay, quick inhale and exhale. Take it all in and let it out. Okay, we're gonna do some head rolls. Just roll the neck from side to side. After two or three rolls, switch and go the other way. After you feel like you've done even, we're going to slight, le, 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 gently tip our head towards our shoulder and let it go. And go to the other side. And Just curve your shoulders in, tucking your navel towards your spine. Inhale and exhale, straighten back out. 
Good, let's practice that again. Curving the shoulders towards the ears, inward, bad posture here, navel towards the spine, and exhale, straighten back out. Good. All right, we're going to get started in child's pose. In child's pose, you cross your feet in the back, put your knees towards the edges of your mat, sit on your heels, and lower your stomach and chest towards the mat. Stretch the hands out, relax your forehead against the mat, and take a deep breath. Start to work here by moving your fingers up the mat, stretching only from the shoulders to the wrists. And then we're gonna do the thread the needle. So I'm gonna pick up my right arm, slide it under my left, and I'm gonna to come to rest on that right shoulder. And just take a good deep breath here. And exhale. One more out. And we're going to switch to your side. Left hand on your right. Come on to that left shoulder. One more round of breath. And we're going to come back to center. So up and it will help release tension in the upper back and the neck. So inhale, tuck your navel to your spine, curve the back, and looking down between your hands, between your knees even. Inhale and on the exhale, arch your back, pushing your navel towards the floor, tilting your tailbone and your head to the sky, and exhale. Inhale. On the inhale, take in all the energy that still serves you. On the exhale, and cow, release energy that no longer serves you. Take a moment here. What's the stress in your life? What's energy that you can let go of? What are thoughts that you can let go of? Breathe it all out. And tip back in the cat. Coming back up, we're going to practice what's called lion chart. It's a deep, deep exhale, wide open mouth. So coming in the cow, breathe out. And imagine any negative energy that you may. And exhale. Okay, we're going to go into puppy. Keep your hips high. Lower your chest all the way to the mat. See if you can melt your chest to the mat. See if your hips can get higher. And inhale. One more round of breath here. We're going to go on to camel. Camel is the opposite movement. Reach for your ankles. Open your chest towards the ceiling. And bring your head back. And if this is not accessible for you, grab your lower back and tip down to where you're comfortable. None of these positions or postures should really cause pain. You should feel stretching, movement, maybe a little discomfort with a deep stretch, but never pain. Come back up. We're going to release back into puppy. Hips stay high, facing away. 
let your body just take your flow here. Does it feel good? Does it feel like it's too much? Do you need more? Do you need less? And you rise back up. Okay, we're gonna move into a sphinx pose. Stretch your legs out behind you. Lower all the way down to the mat. Tip you know, your chest up. Stomach stays firm to the mat. Hands cross. Tip chest up to the sky as much as you're able. You really wanna get that bend starting underneath the shoulder blade and your chest opening. Stay here as long as you need. And release. From face pose, we're going to go into a short flow. Hip, tuck your toes, push your hips up into down dog. Inhale, exhale. And walk your hands to your feet. I'm going to move to where you can see me in the camera. Now, some people, this is their forward fold, or even a little higher, I've seen this. And some people can cross your, their hands to the mat. Again, listen to your body. Do what's accessible to you. The goal in this posture, not necessarily to reach the floor, the goal in this posture is to release tension in the back. So make sure your shoulders are loose, not up against your ears, not tight. Let yourself hang. Don't do any work here. Inhale. Let it go. Okay, really work on releasing tension, releasing the back, the shoulders, the neck. And we can help this along. Shake your head no. That will release the neck from the shoulders. Not it, yes. Hopefully you can feel this in your upper back and neck. You can even do shoulder rolls down here if that feels good, or just hang if that feels better. One more breath here. We're going to slide our hands up, opposite hand and opposite shoulder. This is called a rag doll. Keeping the hips still, we're going to keep that hanging posture. If you catch your shoulder going up to your ears or any tension building back up, just shake your head now, release it again. And we're gonna swing. Staying in that hanging posture, swing. Inhale, exhale. One more breath right here. And we're gonna release ourselves back to the floor. And then we're going to come up in a warrior two. So warrior two. To point your front toes forward, bend this knee, do not extend the toes. This leg is going to be straight with the toes facing the back wall. Inhale, exhale, arms teed out. Soft, don't, not, don't bring your shoulders up to here. Keep them down, keep them soft. accessible to you. You can use a block or a pillow and put it where your hand needs to go and let your hand rest on that block. If that is something that you need. Now in the position of being up, 
this shoulder that's up, pull it back. That creates a twist in that upper spine, that upper part of the spine there. And that will help to release tension, help relax those muscles, and help work that spine. One more breath. And then we're going to come up, go into warrior two on the other side. And breathe, relax. Relax your shoulders, relax your neck. Breathe through it, inhale, exhale. One more breath here. And we're gonna set up the triangle. Remember your block if you need it. Remember to tip this top shoulder towards the back, looking up, creating that nice twist in the upper back there. And let it go. Breathe in. We are strong and grounded here. We are making three connection points to the earth, keeping ourselves grounded to what is good. And we're opening ourselves up to the universe, opening ourselves up to the universe that is new and good. Yoga is a balance. It's a balance of learning, of changing, of grounding down, and of opening up to change. All right, one more breath, and we're gonna come up. We're gonna like cartwheel our arms to the front of the mat, bring our right foot back to our left, pushing up into a down dog. Again, release the neck. And bring the heel to the mat as far as you're able. Making an upside down D in the down dog. Now we're going to chaturanga, into a fight, lying part of the way down, and pushing through the down dog. Feel that arch. And let the mid of your back looking up. And then allow your knees to lift the mat, coming back up. We're going to use camel to transition ourselves. So, grabbing on, I'm going to put some tools aside. These are tools that you can use for camel. Well, for the position of your camel. So remember, if you need to do camel this way, or if you want to do it this way, and we're gonna breathe. One more round, and I'm gonna lower down carefully, allowing my crown of my head to hit the mat, and then lower my body down. We're working our way into a fish pose. So now bring your legs straight. Crown of head on the mat. Now you can stay like this, or if you want a deeper stretch, you can use the block or the foam roller. Position it underneath your shoulder blades there and then roll until your crown of head hits the mat. These are great postures to practice at night. The following postures we're going to do, I often hand out to my students as bedtime routine to promote uh, relaxation, and to help them to de-stress and just overall wellness. All right, we're going to come up from that position. And our next position is knee pile with cat face. So, in knee pile, you're gonna bring your heels of your feet 
from opposite heel to opposite hip and stack your knees on top of each other. So that's knee pile. Take a deep breath. And then for the shoulders and the back, we're going to practice what's called cow face. You're bringing one hand up behind your head between your shoulder blades. The other hand is going to go be back behind your back and up between your shoulder blades. And the goal is to meet fingers. I'll show you from behind. If that's unaccessible for you, you can use a strap, a hand towel, a regular towel, anything that you can put like this. Swing it behind and grab the other end. And every time you do this practice, you can use your fingers to work your way towards each other. So that is an option for you to make this posture more accessible, more beneficial. And then of course, when we're in this posture, we're wanting to focus on a straight back. One more round of breath here. And release, shake it out. We're gonna switch to the other side. We want to give our other knee a turn to be on top. We always want to take turns. Every joint, every leg, every arm should always get a turn to be on top. All right, so now we're gonna use this hand to go up in between the shoulder blades, and this hand to go behind in between the shoulder blades. And if you find that you have one side that seems to be able to reach each other easier or closer, don't worry, it's perfectly normal. Give that side a little bit more love, a little bit more patience, and just work with it. One more round of breath here, and let it go, and shake it out. All right, we're gonna go right into the of fishes since we're pretty much set up for it. Bring that knee out a little bit. Just bring your foot flat against the mat. So instead of your knee being on top of the other knee, it's now up, straight back. Opposite hand to opposite knee. And we're going to inhale and twist. Exhale and twist. On each exhale, you can twist a little bit more. We're gonna hold this posture for a few breaths. One last round of breath here. And come back to center. Switch to the other side. It is designed to twist, it is designed to bend, 
And we really want to maintain that flexibility in our spine. So doing stretches like this really help to promote that. And keep up with maintenance. When you're in this posture, legs up in the air, breathe, listen to music, flex your toes, flex your heels. One of the great things about this posture is not only that it's good to relax your upper body and promote flexibility in the spine, but you're really also reversing blood flow. You're allowing gravity to do its job, and we're getting some blood flow out of our feet, out of our legs, going back towards the heart, virgin. So it's a great one for circulation. One more breath, and then we're going to transition into shoulder stand, shoulder stand, as straight as you can. You can use your hands to support your back, or you can bring your hands out behind you on the mat. This is a throat opener, so you can see I'm really on my, kind of my shoulder blades here. My neck has a nice bend to it. My feet are straight to the floor. I'm going to inhale and exhale. This posture is great for opening up the throat and promoting self-expression. And when you feel ready, go ahead and transition to letting your knees come down with control, toes behind the head. This is called plow. Plow has multiple benefits for you. You can probably feel a stretch in your hamstrings here. You're also relaxing and massaging the upper back. And you're massaging and restoring the digestive organs, which is great because we use those every day. So they need to be restored. This position also promotes feelings of well-being. It's a great way to release anxiety and stress. You can stay in this position for as long as you want or until you have to come out of it. And then allow yourself, if you can, to transition to knee, knees to ears. So bending my knees, tipping my tailbone up until my knees are even with my ears. Just a couple breaths here. And then I'm going to let my back and tailbone slowly with control, come back to the earth. Tip your feet up towards the sky. This is happy baby pose. After a couple of breaths of happy baby, allow yourself to come all the way out on the mat. Full body stretch, make like a star position on your body. Arms out, inhale, and exhale. This is called corpse pose. I like to call it resting angel pose. And the Sanskrit final shavasana, so a final rest. So you just inhale. Then exhale. Stay in final shavasana as long as you do. Close your eyes, do some soft music. It's a great pose just to rest, to meditate, to focus on your thoughts or just to allow your thoughts to go where they might. And when you're ready, I hope that this little routine will benefit your upper back, your shoulders, your neck. Hopefully you'll feel a reduction in pain quite soon. Hopefully a reduction in stress. And maybe you'll even find some self-expression you didn't even know you needed. Namaste.